Can you tell me where you are? Where, what's your sort of job at the moment? Um, I am an associate lecturer at Angley Ruskin University in Cambridge. Yes, and um, your specialism is religion and literature, isn't it? Yes, yes. yes. That's my work. Yes. So no better a person to talk about St Barnabas in literature than you. And here we are in St Barnabas in the Lady Chapel. And St Barnabas has inspired quite a number of authors and poets. Um, why do you think that is? Um, that's a good question. I think, I guess in part, I mean, Oxford is such a literary city, so I guess, you know, by virtue of the fact that um, people who are writing are in Oxford or have been in Oxford. Um, but in terms of St. Barnabas, one of the things that I noticed when I was looking through the materials and reading the books was just the emphasis on um, the church tower. And I think because it's, it's relatively flat in Jericho compared yes. to other, you know, the kind of spires and bit of Oxford, um, it really, St. Barnabas really does literally stick out. And I think, you know, it's a kind of um, landmark and it makes sense why people would, you know, you think that draws to them? I think so, yes. yeah. Especially in, for instance, the, the more recent books, the Pip Williams books, um, the Dictionary of Lost Words and Bookbinder of Jericho, they come quite often throughout. You'll, you know, read a reference to the tower as a kind of landmark yeah. um, throughout the, the story. So, yeah, I think just the presence that people seem to be able to identify but also yeah. drawn to in some way. Yeah, and of course then once they, they get into Jericho, Jericho itself is quite a quite an unusual, um, almost mystical place. Mm. And then when you actually come into St Barnabas itself, yes. it's even more mystical. Yes, yes. And yes. that's quite clear in Thomas Hardy's um, mm -hmm. Jude the Obscure, isn't it? That's yes. that, that sort of the, the striking symbolism of the cross. Yes, yes. In that. Yes, it's quite a powerful scene. Um, Absolutely, yeah, and the the kind of I think in you know in the in the Betjeman poem as well the again it's kind of looking more at the ex exterior of the building but um, there is this real I think there's a mystical quality to that as well in that yeah. poem um, that yeah it seems Saint Barnabas seems to elicit that kind of response I think yes and yeah. Betjeman was probably of all the authors that you surveyed in your article. Um, is the most prolific, isn't he, of, of referencing St. Barnabas? Yes, yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah. So St. Barnabas comes up in his uh, other poems um, and also in his architectural writings. So he, oh, yes. he has a, a book on Oxford, um, an Oxford University chest. Um, yes. And he talks about St. Barnabas in there very positively. So, yes. Um, yeah, yeah, so he, he definitely... Uh, loved the building. He thought it was the best um, Victorian church in Oxford, mm. um, which you know for him he's the Victorian architecture god, isn't he? So yes, yes. I mean, I think that's probably the most famous of all the literature, really, save for maybe Thomas Hardy. But the Betjeman's poem, yes, you know, yeah, yeah, in, in two pounds and barrel that that one yes. little line, yeah, yes. yeah. And he, um, I don't, I think it's significant that he wrote an entire poem on it as well. I think that yes. was, that was, um, I think it shows his yeah. regard for the building. And, and one area that, I, that you very beautifully highlighted in the article is um, Colin Dexter's reference to St Barnabas in the Dead of Jericho, which mm -hmm. then became the first Morse um, play, uh, series, and, or the part of the series and on TV. But I think personally, that in the television adaptation of Inspector Morse, wonderful as they are, St Barnabas loses out a little bit. I don't oh, think they get okay. the same impact okay. as as Morse um, gives it in the book. Ah, I haven't actually watched it, so now I'm going to have to go away and yes, watch it. Yes, I if do. you watch The Dead of Jericho, okay. Yeah, okay. it doesn't quite have the same um, force as the as, as Dexter's written version yes. does. Yes, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because yeah, so, it is quite striking. It is. In, in, yeah. in, it's um, the scene where he's kind of standing in between of this, it's a bit, yeah, it's ominous, which I guess makes sense because it's a murder mystery. Yes, but. exactly. It sets the scene very well. It, it does set the scene very well. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. 
And in, in, in all of your survey of this literature, um, what was your favourite portion or work or, or line even? Or is it hard to put, put that into, you know, is it hard to pin that down? Um, I mean, they're, I, they're all interesting in different ways. I always, you know, I work on Victorian literature, so yes. the Hardy, of course, is going to be one of my favorites. Yeah. But, um, but I really, I really enjoyed the Betjeman poem, and it, I've read it before, um, but I think having to actually write something on it made me, you know, chew on it a little bit, yeah. because it does seem a little bit, initially, when I, when I read it through a few times, I thought, this feels a little bit ambivalent, because he, and I knew, I did a little reading, and found out that he really loved the building and so I thought you know the beginning there's um, he describes it really beautifully um Macaulay chromatic lacing of bricks yes. I love that line it's wonderful isn't it? <laughs> it really is um who else could work that word in to line of poetry but, <laughs> um but then he goes on and he talks you know, kind of there's this nostalgia for pre-St. Barnabas when it was all green space yes. and flowers and poets and things um and so I thought, oh, it seems a little negative, you know, and I actually, I read a little bit of uh, secondary criticism and other people had interpreted the poem like that, like, oh, yes. it's, um, you know, it's intended to kind of be a critique of uh, opulent church buildings. And I just thought, oh, this doesn't seem right, because <laughs> no. he liked the building. Yeah. Um, so that was actually, I, I enjoyed sitting with it and kind of going over the poem in my mind and thinking, what is he doing here? Um, so I think... I, I think I actually ended up memorizing the poem because I was kind of going over and over and yeah, thinking yeah. about it. But um, I suppose yeah. there is a bit of a paradox in it. In some yeah, ways, yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's you, not overly comfortable. Is no, it? it's not. It's not. And and the ending, the kind of, um, it does leave you feeling a little bit. There's something that is, yeah, yeah uncomfortable is a good word, um, which yeah. is maybe part of the reason why I like it. It's not particularly cozy, which is. No. Not, you know, the building isn't really cozy either. I mean, in the set, you know, in a good way, in a kind of yeah. It it's I think there's something about Saint Barnabas that's um, other, beautifully other, yes. which is I think where the mystical kind of yes. quality that you were talking about comes in. At least that's my my experience of it. Um, and I guess just to, to finish then, um, the you know it may be that writers are not people of faith. You know, perhaps like Philip Pullman, who mm -hmm. who adores Christianity for its literary aspects, mm -hmm. or he loves church buildings or mm -hmm. hymns, but he's not a particular believer himself. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just because those who write about it aren't necessarily people of faith doesn't matter in in, in the sense that it still is a place where faith is nurtured. Mm -hmm. The church, the St Barnabas, and the architecture, you know, adds to that. Yes, in a, yes. In a big way. Um, I think yeah. um, the the impact that the church has had on, on literature as well as on, on people's faith is quite significant. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think, and I think the kind of, just reflecting on as somebody who comes to St. Barnabas, yes. um, in, you know, as I've, I would say being at home here. So yes. even though, even though, like I said, I don't think it's a kind of cozy no. <laughs> building, um, but I feel at home here. Okay. And I think that, you know, you part of that, of course, is coming to worship and the people and all of that kind of thing. Yes. But I think also, yeah, you, I guess you do have a, um, a, you know, experience of, depending on why you come to the building. Maybe that's yes. what I'm trying to say yes. is, you know, obviously it shapes the way that you see it. Um, and, um, yeah. Well, I think the takeaway from, from your very lovely article, and thank you for writing it, um, from this little chat, and thank you for talking to me, is that uh, literature matters, buildings matter, and faith matters. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I agree. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you.